first, there was the skirt. Comfortable, adjustable, zero waste, easy to make. But the people wanted more. Hello, friends, reptiles, adjustable clothing enthusiasts. The time has come. You asked for it, I will deliver. Ever since the split side skirt video came out, the people have been asking for one thing and one thing only, split side trousers or pants, either's fine. We all know what we mean. The thing is though, I'm not entirely confident about where to start with this. It's not like the skirts that I've made a lot of. This is me trying something out for kind of the first time. I think I need a bit of help. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. Hi, same. After a long time, it's nice to finally like see you face to face. I know, uh, my emails with collaborations always start so far ahead because of all the, the filming in advance and stuff. I just want to start working on that. But then also, what about those four other things I was doing? <laughs> I'm the opposite. Normally I'm like, oh, I should probably put up a video in three days. I should do something. So it's been great for me to actually like plan. This one feels especially long time coming because it was like one of the first things that people requested. And the first things that I think they recognized when I made that original skirt was everyone related it to, I think it's Japanese hakama or hakama immediately, which is more traditionally pants, though it can be a skirt. So I think everybody was right away like, do trousers. And I was like, yeah. Top design. There's mm -hmm. like, there's reasons that I haven't done trousers yet. And I'm interested to hear if you have like a better plan for this. Number one thing, which side do you put on top is like my number one question. Because my original skirt, the back went on first and the front is layered over it. It's a skirt though, doesn't matter. When I was researching Hakama, when I was researching that, I noticed that the back always goes on last. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why. And it was only like months later that I was like, does that make it easier to go to the bathroom if your back unties first? So speaking of Hakama, so I have these. The back side has longer ties so that it, you can wrap around. It is because you can just drop the back and then use the toilet. So that yeah. basically seems to be it. Makes a lot of sense. The other one that I've seen though is, I don't know if you've seen, they're sometimes described as Thai fisherman's trousers, but like the open wrap trousers and with those ones, I think it's the same. The back comes round to the front on top, but I never knew if that was just like a stylistic thing. Yeah, like, is this just a style choice or is it specific? But it does make so much sense. I don't know. I think I'm going to make two for this video and I kind of want to do one each way just to test, like, is it that annoying to have to undo both sides in order to go to the bathroom or does it not matter that much? Like, how does that affect the design? Because I know for me, the, all of these traditional ones, the 18th century petticoat, the Hakama, the big thing that they're lacking is the pockets. So like that's my priority is getting attached pockets in there and that's what makes the front going on last better or easier. Yeah, I actually hadn't thought about the pockets in a lot of detail but that makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. I'm the same. If I'm gonna wear trousers I need pockets. The skirts I can kind of get away with like worst case scenario I'll shove like an 18th century pocket under there but there's not room. Yeah. That's what a lot of people said is like, oh, you can just leave the slit and just do the detached pocket thing. And yeah, it just doesn't feel like that would work super well with trousers unless you did like super wide legs, basically a skirt, but with a crotch in it kind of thing. That's definitely something I want to try and figure out because I think that if I was going to just make a skirt and put a crotch in it, that would work completely fine. But I like my trousers a little bit more fitted, so I'm trying to figure out how I can do something that's a little bit more not quite as full at the top and not quite as full in the leg, and that definitely you won't be able to shove an extra like detachable pocket under there. They're gonna yeah. have to be built in. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things. I really like how you do your waistbands, and I wanted to test that out because I think that'll work better with like a more fitted trouser than just throwing on two ties which works fine for big pleated things, but... Yeah, I think that's my... I think that's what's the main difference in my head about, like, split side versus wrap, especially when you get to pants. I've seen, like, the wrap pants all over the place. They're actually kind of having a resurgence. They're big. And they're super cute, 
But to me, you still have that split all the way down the side. And if you're active, you're moving around, you're sitting in weird positions, like, is that going to fall open and just feel weird? And it's the same thing with skirts. Like, I love a good wrap skirt, but you have to have so much wrap in my brain in order to avoid having that fly open. And that was the great thing about the split side skirts was that your hem is still connected. That's what I'd love to translate to the pants. It does, yeah, it does change some things. <laughs> I'm wondering, try reversing my split side skirt so that the back waistband goes on top. And that just changed the pockets for me because the handiness of that first split side skirt or that original kind of concept is the pockets themselves provide that coverage in what you do have as a split. So if I'm sitting down or anything, anything's coming open, the pockets are a backing. The way that I ended up reversing it was putting the pockets onto the front panel and doing it more like pants pockets. So they have like sort of a U-shaped opening so you can get into them. But now there's nothing covering that split in the side, more sort of 18th century petticoat style. And like, I've been wearing that skirt and I was like, this doesn't really bother me because yeah, it's a full skirt. You just don't really notice if that like comes open a little bit. And I'm usually wearing like a long something underneath already. But yeah, that's what I kind of want to avoid with pants is having any kind of split that can open up and be like, hello. I think it's just going to be way more obvious than it is in a skirt where there's just way more material mm -hmm. and I think you're also way li more likely to have a shirt or another skirt or something under it. I layer up skirts all the time and wear like two or three at once but you can't you can't do that with trousers. Yeah and I'm more likely to wear you know either like a cropped kind of shirt that like just hits it and doesn't even tuck in or something that just barely tucks in a little bit. That's kind of my thought, and that's why I'd like to make the two versions, because I think my first one, I'm going to go with that old school concept. The pockets are the backing, they're attached to the back section, the front one goes on top, and it's like in my brain, that's going to work. It should work construction-wise, and then I'm just interested to wear those and be like, is this annoying is this like i don't want to wear this for longer than three hours because it's too hard to get out of and then i want to try flipping it so that the back does come on second but with that it's the question of how are we getting in those pockets and covering the slit and it might just be like putting another piece of fabric there you know like there's no rules just slap another piece of fabric on it I'm definitely thinking that I, I want to have a go at something like a, a very simplified version of Hakama. Big wide legs and it can be very relaxed and comfortable. Yeah, my real goal is to try and figure out how I can do something that's a, that's more fitted and more. And I think figuring out that which side goes on top and where the pockets go and how do you make sure that there's no shirt throat or anything else showing through the side slits. That's going to be the real tricky bit. I sense a couple of rounds of mock-ups in my future. Fun times, always a blast. I'm going to totally skip the mock-ups and just be like... I respect that. I'll be honest, it was a really long time until I started doing mock-ups and even now I'm like, I'll do a mock-up and I'll be like, is this just about good enough that I can just finish it? and it'll be a real thing. It's still the practice version, but it's finished. It wasn't like wasted. That's always my thing is I'm like, if I spent all this time sewing something, I just want to be able to wear it at the end. Either wear it or be like, okay, we're recycling the fabric entirely, but I'm trying to avoid that more as much as possible the more I sew and just be like, this is a wearable thing. So, I mean, honestly, I think I would do better with mock-ups if I just got myself some mock-up fabric. Like I just need to have more like muslin and stuff that I don't care about, but it's like every piece of fabric I have, I'm like, I love this fabric and I want to wear it. <laughs> but I like this because we're both kind of going for that first same thing. So I'm really interested to see how both of ours will end up differing, but like just go with the simple. We know this will work, the wide leg, very similar to Hakma. I think my second version I'm still not going to do super fitted, but I definitely do also want to make them more fitted. I'm interested, the one thing that I tell people you can't really do with split side is anything like thin tight, like legit fitting. Like people are like, can you do a pencil skirt? And I'm like, 
not really. <laughs> yeah. I've tried once or twice doing like an 18th century style petticoat, but with like only just enough fabric to get around my hips because I only had that much fabric. The one or two times I've done it, I've ended up with really bad gaping at the side openings because I'm kind of not like, I think it's because there's more tension on that part just below the side openings where like the widest part of your hips is and that just means it doesn't hang straight anymore but if there's some way you could figure that out that would be like the, like the biggest thing that i don't think people even really notice in videos you don't notice it till you actually make one on your own body is that that gaping at the bottom it's like if your waistbands aren't perfectly lined up then where the split comes together is like that and then you get like that weird bubble and you can even sew it perfectly lined up and then like you're wearing it and one of them shifts on you and suddenly you look down and you're like why do i have a weird bubble there that's kind of the number one downside of the split side i guess but it's also like everything has a con not everything can be perfect yeah and like clothes move when you wear them that's just how it works youtube is great but you get dressed just for your reveal and then you just film your reveal only moving in nice ways and then you only cut down to the bits where it looks good that's yeah. why like, anytime that i make something that just legit does not fit me well or look good people are always like it looks so great so beautiful and i'm like well i made it look nice because it was the end trust me when i tell you it didn't work yeah that's kind of what i really want to try to make better though is that that little gapage problem and i feel like the more you're adjusting it because uh, like every split side something has like its optimal measurement which is generally your measurement you made it for you it's you know my waist is 32 so that's what i'm making it for could it be 34 or 30 yes but as soon as you do start to adjust in those ways you have more and more of the problems that come in either as you overlap you get a little bit of that pucker there or as you open, you need that thing that's blocking the back side. I figure it's one of these things that it's just a trade-off. You can have the adjustability, but that means that sometimes it's going to sit a bit weird. If I, if I wanted something that was going to sit like perfectly over my waist and hips, I would make it fitted with a more permanent closure. I mean, that's fair. Like, if you want something to fit you really well that you store by, you often have to go tailor it because store-bought clothes aren't made perfectly for your body either. And I think that's something that like, I still forget with sewing clothes. And I think a lot of people who don't sew clothes completely forget is that like store-bought clothes are not made for your body and they don't fit you well either. And they're also not perfect. So it's okay if your handmade clothes aren't perfect. <laughs> I'm excited to try though. I'm excited to see what we come up with. Same. I'm really looking forward to this one. I feel like it's been in the works for a while <laughs> and it's going to be really nice to finally have something. Have some answers. Does this work? It should work. It should work. It obviously works. History has multiple versions of split side pants. It's, I think the question now is, does it work with pockets? Yeah. That's what modern times are figuring out. Does it work with pockets? Does it work with a more fitted waist and hips? Does it work with a modern lifestyle? Exactly. Well, I cannot wait to see what you come up with. We Same. Be at some point. Yeah, looking forward to it. These are Hakama, formal trousers for wearing with kimono, or at least my attempt at making them. If you want to make your own Hakama, I recommend this tutorial appearing in the top right corner, which is English language instructions by a certified kimono teacher. I'm not going to be showing how I made these because, quite frankly, I probably did it wrong. Let's test the can you go to the bathroom without taking them off completely theory, and yeah, not a lot of room. I'm willing to chalk this one up to human error since I did make these myself. This look on my face is me realising that I'm not sure I can remember how to tie them properly. They do have fairly big gaps on the side, and I have seen this in basically every pair, so I'm pretty confident it's correct. Usually these are worn over a shorter length kimono, but that's still more than long enough to fill up these gaps. Hakama have a very specific pleating pattern and standardised sizing, but if you ignore those two things, the basic shapes make a very good starting point for some 18th century petticoat inspired trousers.
For this first pair of trousers, you just need four big rectangles, as long as your waist to your ankle plus seam allowance, and pretty wide, and two smaller rectangles. I recommend you go much shorter and wider than what's on screen for the smaller rectangles. I ended up taking up about four inches off the top, and they're still too tall and too narrow. You're going to sew each small panel in between a pair of big panels, so you get this U-shape. This, believe it or not, is your leg. Then you're going to fold each leg in half, right sides to right sides, and sew the two big panels together. Make sure you leave a gap at the top, that is, the end that's not sewn to the small panel on the other side. You can finish this nicely if you like, there's more advice on that in my skirt video, or you can just iron down the seam allowances and leave it. Now for the magic bit, turn one leg inside out so the seam allowances are facing outward, take the other leg, turn the right way out so seam allowance is facing inward, and stuff it inside the other leg. Line up all the edges, small panel to small panel, front and back edges together. This is the crotch seam, and you're going to sew the two legs together down one set of big panels, across the top of the small panels, and up the other set. Then you should be able to pull the legs apart and have a full pair of trousers. The next thing to do is pleat down the top and attach some ties. Again, I have a lot more advice on this in my skirt video. It's functionally the exact same thing since the extra panels don't engage with the waistline of the trousers at all. After that, all it needs is a hem. These definitely came out a bit on the short side because I used all the fabric I had and it wasn't quite enough. And I've learned some things about proportions. The small panels on the inside leg needs to be much shorter and wider than I made them. But overall, these are cute. They're just as comfy as a skirt, and while I definitely think they hit collots better than trousers, they absolutely work.
testing the backdrop, absolutely not. If you want to use the bathroom, you're going to have to undo both waistbands. These are great, they're fine. I'm just not convinced I want to spend my whole life in big wide trousers. So back to the drawing board. My next bright idea was to take an existing trousers pattern and make some modifications. I'm not going to show a lot of me tracing them out other than to tell you that what I'm doing is not the approved or correct way of doing this, but I will show you how I converted them from a fitted trouser with darts to a looser A-line pair. Trace the whole inside leg of the trousers and the waistline up to the inside leg of the dart. Stick a pin through the point of the dart and the paper underneath. Rotate the whole paper pattern around that pin so the outside leg of the dart now touches the line you've already traced. You've effectively closed the dart, which has curved the waistband up and opened up the leg of the trousers to be wider. You can now trace the rest of the waistband and the outside leg in their new position. And yes, this works with skirts as well. This gave me two slightly flared pattern pieces, a front and a back leg. You can see the slight difference in shape between the front and the back. Initially, I thought I would test drive a wrap style pair of trousers and then just try and close the split. So I have two backs, two fronts and two half fronts. If you just wanted to make a wrap pair, this seems to be how most of them constructed. I dutifully made up each leg with one front and one back joined at the inside leg and one half front attached to the back. I joined both legs together at the inseam and then tried them on, and yeah, those sure are wrap trousers. You can see basically everything every time I move. Cute, but not what I'm going for. So I tried sewing up the outside seam together up to the mid thigh, and yeah, not, not so great. I managed to semi-rescue these, but I forgot that the front is supposed to line up with the back, not the extra half front that I added on. Good ideas, bad execution. Let's try that one more time. What if, instead of an outside panel that was a whole half of the front, we cut it down to just enough of an overlap to cover the gaps? This is just traced off the front panel of my existing trousers pattern. For ease, from now on we'll call this the front extension. I did actually make an intermediary pair that was going to be my final ones, but it turns out I didn't film any of the making of, or else I did and I lost the footage somewhere. So anyway, this is the theory in action. Hold on for the instructions. A couple of problems. Firstly, they don't fit. I had to make some adjustments to the trouser pattern to give myself more room, both height and width-wise.
Secondly, I left the side seam open all the way down to the end of the extension, which gapes a lot. This is only about an inch higher than the crotch, so it's really ridiculously low. What I will say though, is that the backdrop is pretty impressive. If you really badly wanted trousers that you didn't have to take off in the bathroom, that's how big you need to make the side gaps. So let's do this one last time properly. You'll need two back pieces, two front pieces and two front extensions. For each leg, you're going to hem the side of the front piece down a short way, shorter than the full front extension. Then you're going to layer that with the front extension, put the back piece on top, right sides down, and sew up the side seam like a normal pair of trousers without catching the hemmed edge. You can then sew the inside seam and the two legs together. This will give you a smaller side opening with coverage underneath. On the front panel, I've marked the widest point of my hips with a notch, and I'm folding down and hemming the side seam to just that notch. I ended up testing this out a couple of times to get it right with the first pair, but once you know, you know. Then the front extensions come out. This is exactly the same as that corner of the front leg pattern, except I haven't hemmed it at all. Now for the layering. Front extension, right side up. Front leg, also right side up, making sure that it's all lined up exactly. The edge of the extension should just poke out past the hem front down to the notch. After that, they should line up perfectly. Back leg then goes on top, right side down. At this point, you should be able to pin that side seam from the bottom up to the notch. It'll be three layers thick at the top, but only two further down. When you get to the notch, I find it's handy to go in between the layers and just move the top of the front panel out of the way, so at that point you're definitely only sewing the back to the front extension. The whole layering thing is topologically a bit weird. It might help to think of it as sewing the back to the front extension and sandwiching the front in between them up to the notch. Or you might prefer to pin the front to the front extension after doing the side hem and treat them as one piece in your mind until you take the pins out and the side opening can open up again. Once you've done all that on both sides, turn one leg inside out, stuff the right side out leg inside the wrong side out one, match up the front, back and inside leg seams, then you can sew up the crotch seam and pull one leg out of the other to get a perfect pair of trousers. And this is how that pair turned out. Now admittedly, I made them in a really busy print, so you can't see any fit issues, but I did also take the time to adjust my pattern a little. These are easily the best of the lot in terms of coverage and comfort. I'm almost sad I made these as essentially pyjamas, because I would actually wear these outside in a slightly more robust fabric.
Testing the back drop? Absolutely not. You do have to take these all the way down when you go to the bathroom, which is not the worst, but it does take a little longer than a regular pair of jeans. I also think the amount of adjustability on this pair is not going to be huge. The trade-off is that those side openings barely gape at all. How did it go? Not bad. I think there's still some tweaks that can be made. I was kind of expecting because the skirts is just the skirts just work mm -hmm. right yep. and I was like how much harder can this be it turns out really like quite a bit harder yeah the first one I made I was like okay this is fine like I made some design choices that didn't really work with like how I did the waistband but it really didn't have anything to do with the fact that it was pants the pants part worked but it's because I did it exactly like the skirt so they're like big full i use a drapey fabric but like you can see how much there is of it it's a full circle with a half circle on each leg and it just has that same concept of like the back one ties on with a ribbon in the front and then the front one has big sashes yeah of course it works easy peasy lemon squeezy and then i started making a more fitted pair it did not go as well <laughs> I had a very similar experience, so like I'm, I'm actually wearing these ones right now. Hang on, let's see if I can back up. So these guys, same, I used just rectangles, mm -hmm. but pleated on both sides. They've just got two waistbands. They gape a bit at the side, but they're not they're not too bad. And with that, yeah, I was like, okay, there's some like proportional differences that I want to make. They came out too short and all that kind of nonsense, but they basically work. And then I tr started trying to do something, something that, that wasn't massive. Yeah, so my second pair, I switched also to the back going on first. No, that's the normal way. To the front going on first and the back going on last. I swear to God, I say that wrong every time I say it in a video and then I have to stop and be like, which side actually goes on first? So this one, this is the front side. So I did kind of like on my reverse split side skirt where the pockets are just built in and like that worked. I tried to do a pocket extension here to be a backing for that split, which did not work on this pair, but worked in theory. The problem here was I made it too big. So like it really should stop like here, but because it's so long, it's actually going over my butt but then it's a non-stretch fabric. So it's making it like pull up like that and you get wrinkles all down the front. But I was like, okay, in theory, this works. I just made it too big. But yeah, they ended up being too small. And then I extended them on the sides and they were still too small. <laughs> and I was like, what's happening here? And I'm honestly still not sure if it's like, this was because it was split side. And if you had just sewn them up the side like normal, they'd be fine. Or if it's like, you just don't know how to measure for pants. And so you messed it up. I'm still a little bit lost on it. I'll admit, I so I cheated a little bit. Instead of drafting my own pattern from scratch for the more fitted ones, I started by like pulling out a paper pattern I already had. I used that as like a starting point to go, mm -hmm. okay, this is the kind of shapes. And then I did some messing around, like I didn't want to put darts in it. So I just pivoted it so it was more of a, like an A-line shape. And, but almost immediately, it just started going a little bit wrong. My sort of intermediate pair, which... Do I actually have those? Yes, I do. I haven't even finished these because they just went so badly wrong. I thought kind of the same as you. So I thought about those wrap trousers that exist. And I was like, surely if those work, can start there and then just like close up the sides. Yeah. That'll work, right? It, it didn't. It didn't <laughs> work. Yeah. I think maybe I got things a bit misaligned. This is one of the things that I found was quite difficult is that once you were, once I'd started with a wrap and then I was trying to close up the sides, I think I was just not quite getting them in the right places. So it was gaping or it was pulling and it was, I just hadn't lined them up right. I don't know what I'm going to do with those. They're not. Recycle. Yeah, these I'm honestly really sad about because they ended up, I was going to do like these funky pirate pants version and everything. And then I put them on and they've got pretty wide legs, but like nowhere near as wide as my giant circle pants. And so they ended up like looking really nice in theory, like I made a nice pair of slacks, except that they don't fit. And because the sides are still not, if I stand really still and straight, the sides are like just barely meeting. And you know, they should be like overlapping a little bit. So because of that, they're always pulling. And so you always have that little bubble where the the gap is and like 
I have to be like, and not gonna move now. Trying to get like one picture where it wasn't there was pretty much impossible. And so I'm like, ah, dang it. I was so close. And I don't, I was like, maybe you can extend them even more, but I don't think I have enough fabric left to do it. I was like, ugh. Oh, well, sometimes you just got to chalk it up till I learned some lessons, which is why I then was like, I need to make a third pair. I need to uh, put those lessons into use right now, <laughs> which those are the ones that I'm wearing now. They ended up being, they're actually like knickers. And I went back to that pirate pants style and did the little cuff on there, did like some lacing on the cuff, but stuck with the whole, the back panel goes on top and the pockets are in the front and this one worked so much better i mean granted i'm not trying to make them skin tight again since they're a little poofy they have some more width there but yeah it worked so much better i did much less of an overlap here so it's only got like an inch and that keeps it from like buckling as much but there's still like a little bit of covering on the gap. I think ultimately I need to find an in-between. Like the inch isn't quite enough, but what I did before was way too much. So it needs to be like here. But yeah, this one actually pretty much worked. <laughs> so my final pair, which I ended up with cropped ones as well, because I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's just make By it By the a third one, shorter. yeah. We're like, let's not yeah. use as much fabric this time. <laughs> I use the same basic pattern that I'd worked out. It's still a little bit too small, so I think one of the things that I'd want to change, I might do another pair, just because aside from anything else, I think this is actually too small for me, like originally. But with this one, so I did the back going on first with a just a little bit of a, an underlap, and then the front with a sash on over the top. The one thing I did find is because I, I left them really open, really far down. I think that's what's giving me the bubbling at the moment is that actually if I joined this further up, but still had the underlap going as long as it is, there'd be better coverage. I think that's my plan for pair number four because it never ends. <laughs> Never. Always something more we can learn from it. Yeah, I feel like it's always really tempting to leave that gap so far down. My early skirts even, I used to make the gap really long. And then I was like, oh, you don't actually have to, even if you have to kind of wiggle it on, like that's technically still okay. So yeah, it's, closing those up definitely helps with the gaping and everything on there. That's interesting though. I Now that you said you tried one off of a wrap pattern, now I'm like, oh, I kind of want to try taking one or two pants patterns and seeing how easy they would be to convert. I say that, I probably won't. But that would be an interesting thing to try is like, other than trying to start from scratch, because like, I know I love to encourage people to self-draft, but pants are freaking hard. And when it comes to that, I'm like, look, it is often just so much easier to start with a pattern and go from there. Because getting the crotch seam right is like, why is this so hard? This one is like super long, which is always fine for me on Palazzo pants, because you can't really see the crotch at all because they're so big. And so I'm like, it's fine if it's lower, like at least it won't give me a wedgie. But then these, trying to make them fit better. I actually tried this thing where I took wire and just molded it to my cross section and then used that. And that's the best method I've ever come across. It actually is correct. I just made it still too long, which makes sense. I overcompensate in everything that I make. I'm always like, add an inch, make it a little bit bigger, just in case. But when you do that on the crotch, you just end up with a sacky crotch. No, I'm really bad, but especially when I'm drafting my own things, I'm like, and then I need to add in this much for seam allowance. When I actually come to sew them, I'm like, nah, you don't need that much seam allowance. And every single time I'm like, no, we planned this. Yeah. You wrote it on the paper. This is what you chose. I know. I'm always like sewing right up next to the edge. And then I'm like, why are you doing that? You gave yourself a half inch. Use it. It's hard to figure those out. So it would be very interesting to see like, what changes would you need to make to a pants pattern? Because it sounds like on both of our sides, the thing that kind of was the biggest struggle was ending up making them too small. Like that ended up too small. These are okay, but like, they're on the verge of being too small still. It's interesting that that's kind of what the main thing is. And I'm like, is that because of the overlap and we're not compensating for it enough? I almost wonder if it's because trousers, are certainly using a commercial pattern, I was looking at it and going, is this supposed to like hold you in? Is it supposed to be tight, tight? Because with the wrap, it can't be tight, tight. Like if you try, it'll just gape. I think that might've been like, maybe I've never made this pattern 
as it's intended, if you see mm-hmm. what I mean. So I don't know how the fit compares. Yeah. And I wonder if the, actually that is my size, but... But when they're fully sewn. That was my thought when I first tried these on and realized for the first time that the sides were too small because I was pulling the fabric together and it met. And so I was like, is this just how pants are supposed to be? Are they supposed to be form fitting like that? So for a while, I was like, oh, this will still totally work. I think it's just you're not used to making tight pants because I've pretty much, I've only made form fitting pants once before and I have no memory of it, which is not helpful. (laughs) So I just kept being like, this might be how it's supposed to be. And then in the end, even if that is true, the split sidedness of them destroys that and you can't. So it kind of does come down to like, you can't make them too tight. Yeah. Because they won't be. (laughs) Certainly, I think that if someone was not very confident with like pattern drafting and wanted to make split sided trousers or pants of some kind, just make them big. They'll probably work if you make them big. Yeah. Go with the giant flowy legs. A ton of fabric hides a million sins. (laughs) Which is why I'm just like, make big stuff, make a big skirt. Full skirts, full pants, it's easier. Baggy tops, baggy dresses. Hey, that's how I started. It's way, way easier. But yeah, I feel like I have kind of an idea of a starting place, if or when I want to try another pair. I should, but I feel like I need to give it a break right now. (laughs) I'm a little bit like, can I put a zipper in something again? been like two years since i did that but at least we have like something to go off of yeah so i'm kind of intrigued to see if anyone else sort of picks it up and runs with it like we got it started how about you guys try now (laughs) now you guys show us what you did go from there please i need a break (laughs) yeah this was a hard one for like trying to explain what i was doing because i was like i don't think most of this is gonna work in a good enough way that you should do what I'm doing. Why am I fully explaining to you what I'm doing when you probably shouldn't do that? I sneakily feel like I maybe should make another one just so I can do a better job of showing the steps. This is fun though. I'm glad I finally tried it. Mm. I'm glad I got one wearable pair of pants out of it. I mean, this one is wearable, but because the legs are so giant and because we it's the whole you have to take off the entire thing to go to the bathroom i'm like those are going to be like short-term wearable like are we going out to dinner i could throw these on take them off when i get home (laughs) not an all-day pair of pants these i think i'm gonna have to just recycle unless i could think of some way to make them bigger but these pirate pants are super comfy so one special occasion pair and one (laughs) one every day i just want to put a skirt on again. I've been wearing pants for so many days. And so now, viewers, I hand the mantle over to you. Do you think you can do better? You probably can, but go ahead, prove it. There's so many ideas and so much potential in this concept, and even putting our heads together, I think Charlie and I have really only scratched the surface. Don't forget to go over and check out Charlie's video too, especially if you want to see pockets, because you're always asking me about pockets. I did a whole video about pockets, you can go and watch that one too. But watch Charlie's video first, because it's going to be more directly applicable to making split side pants. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep the YouTube gods happy. Follow me on Instagram to get pictures of my cat and maybe I'll do TikToks one day again. Who knows? And down in the description box you'll find a link to my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off or reoccurring donation to support this channel and my never-ending quest to fill my wardrobe with even more entirely ridiculous objects. The current Ko-fi goal is to get an embroidery machine. That's a long way in the future but who knows? one day. Kofi supporters get early access to all of my videos and I couldn't do what I do without their help. So until the next time I come up with another ridiculous idea for what to do with a garment that just has two ties and roughly fastens around you, dream big and I'll see you next time.